We just got detailed information on Genshin's brand new 5-star character Chiori. So, in this video, I'm gonna give you a full pre-release analysis covering everything you need to know, her kit, ideal weapons, artifacts, teams, and, most importantly, we will find out if she really sucks as much as some leaks previously suggested. Also, in the video description you find three codes to get Primer Gems and stuff, so make sure to redeem them quickly. But now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, let's start out by going over her kit. First, her normal or charge attacks are not really important because Chiori seems to be mostly an off-field sub-DPS. However, it should be mentioned, design-wise, that it looks very cool how she dual wields her blade in her attack animation. I personally absolutely love this. But as I said, since she's probably a sub-DPS, let's now look at the main part of her kit, which in my opinion would be her elemental skill. When you unleash her skill, she dashes forward and then places a little doll called Tomoto on the battlefield who will assist you in combat and attack enemies alongside with you. I imagine Tomoto to be kinda like Fischl's Oz. Now, if you just tap the skill, you will dash forward and place down Tomoto, however you can also hold the skill and then adjust the angle with which you do that dash and then, you know, place down Tomoto afterwards obviously. Now, the interesting and also kind of a bit worrying part about this to me is that the damage that Tomoto does is based on both your attack and your defense, so we don't have a pure defense scaling like with many other Geo characters. And, and this is a very nice thing, if there is a Geo construct on the field, like for example Zhongli's pillar, then a second Tomoto will appear on the field so you have double the damage output. Now, before we go on to the burst, there are a couple of things about Tomoto that weren't clearly specified but would be very interesting to know. For example, how much range does Tomoto have and is there any chance that we can reposition them? If not, then is Tomoto a stationary geostructure that also breaks if a boss walks over it? I mean, for example, if you play Albedo and you place down his flower, this has always been a huge pain, especially in Abyss or boss fights, when you put that thing on the floor and then the boss walks right over it and then you have to replace it because it broke. Would be kinda sad if Tomoto suffers the same fate, I personally would prefer it if it's like Ito's bowl that can be pushed around but not destroyed. However, we'll probably have to wait until release to get a final answer for this. But alright, now that we've covered Tomoto, let's look at her elemental burst. Now, unfortunately there are no damage numbers visible in the footage in the background, but from the animation and how it looks like on the field alone, I think the moment you unleash the burst, this will be like one of these big bada boom, one time big damage number bursts. But this is not the only thing that it does. What the burst also does is it provides different possible effects based on what you do after using her elemental skills upward sweep. If you unleash the burst, do the upward sweep and then tap the elemental skill button again, it will automatically switch to the next character in your party. Also interesting to know, since you, as I already said, can adjust the angle at which you do your elemental skill, you could use it to dash upwards, then tap the skill again and switch to your next character mid-air doing a plunging attack. That could be potentially really interesting. Also, and this also underlines the fact that Chiori is mostly an off-field sub-DPS, her Tomoto, or Tomotos if you have two of them, will stay on the field even if you swap her out and they will attack the enemy in sync with your currently active character on the field whenever that character's normal, charged or plunging attack hits an opponent. And I want to stress that this is very nice because it also includes charged attacks which some off-field DPS abilities don't would be for example really cool if you run Ito as an on-field DPS together with Chiori because, as we know, the main part of Ito's damage comes from his charge attack combo, so it would be really sad if the Tomotos would only attack in sync if you don't charge but only with normal attacks. But luckily they thought about that, so no need to worry here. Also it says that the burst can give Chiori Geo Infusion, which is kinda interesting because why would she need Geo Infusion if she's an off-field character? So maybe she will be an on-field, off-field hybrid similar to Yaimiko? And finally her passive ability makes it that whenever a character in your team has a custom outfit or a custom wind glider, then their movement speed will be increased. This is a nice little thing for exploration, but in combat I don't think we will need it all that much. However, what would be needed, and I would be super happy about that, is if you could maybe drop a like, because it helps the video out a ton, especially on smaller channels like mine, so big cheers for your support. But now that we're done with her kit, let's now look at which weapon options might go well with Chiori. Well, first and foremost, Chiori is gonna release alongside her new signature weapon on the banner, which is called Uraku Mizugiri. 
Unfortunately, we didn't get any specific details on this, just that it will have a defense substat, which is pretty interesting because it kind of indicates that even though she scales with attack and defense, defense might still be the favorable stat for her. But yeah, of course, they didn't tell us anything about the effect, unfortunately. However, I think it's safe to assume that the Uraku Mizugiri will obviously be her best in slot weapon. Just by the way, since it has a defense substat, it might also be a very good option for Albedo in case you're already having him. However, in terms of Chiori's weapon choices, the Uraku Mizugiri is definitely not going to be the only option. So let's look at some alternatives. Of course, if you have it, the Cinnabar Spindle is probably an absolutely phenomenal choice for her. Not only because it has a big defense substat, just like her signature weapon, but also because it increases your elemental skill damage based on your defense. So just like for Abedo, this one would also be an absolutely phenomenal choice. However, if you don't have it, no need to be sad. The Festering Desire, which is way easier to obtain, would also be a nice choice because it increases your elemental skill damage, but it also increases those puppets' crit rate at the same time. Given the Energy Recharge substat, that will probably be very good, so you won't struggle with getting your burst back on cooldown. Alternatively, if you are a mild spender and you buy the Battle Pass regularly, then the Wolf Fang as a Battle Pass sword might also work very nicely because it too increases your elemental skill damage and elemental burst crit rate while giving you even more crit rate on the substat, so this is definitely a viable choice. And last, but definitely not least, if you want to keep it very, very budget friendly, then the Harbinger of Dawn would be a nice 3 star option, giving you both crit damage and crit rate if your HP is over 90%, but given that you're running a Geo team, you're probably going to be shielded, so your HP shouldn't be that much of an issue, meaning this sword would be a cheap and reliable stat stick option. Alright, so weapons done, let's now go over to which artifacts might be a good choice on Chiori. When it comes to the main stats, she's probably going to be a very traditional sub-DPS, with a crit circlet with rate or damage depending on what you choose with your weapon, a defense sans because even though her skill scales with attack and defense, her signature weapon with the defense substat suggests that probably defense is going to be favorable, so defense sans it is. Should that turn out to be different, then of course you would go for an attack percent sans. On the goblet, obviously geo damage, and when it comes to substats, of course you primarily want to have crit rate crit damage, followed by defense and attack percent, whatever she happens to scale with more. And now that we know which stats we probably want to run on her, let's also take a look at which artifact sets have a good synergy with Chiori. The first thing that comes to mind, obviously, would be the Husk of Opulent Dreams, with the 2-pace bonus giving you plus 30% defense, which will translate into more damage, remember she scales on defense too, and with the 4-piece giving you even more defense and geo damage percent. Especially if you've already been farming this domain and have quite some of these artifacts to spare in your inventory, Chiori might be a great place to put your leftover pieces. However, another artifact that sounds really promising would be, of course, the Golden Troop, arguably the best artifact set for a lot of DPS units, giving you more elemental skill damage on the 2-piece and even more elemental skill damage on the 4-piece. Now, I think both of these artifact sets are going to give us good numbers, however, we're probably going to have to wait till release to see which one of these has the edge. Just some things to keep in mind in general, the Husk of Opulent Dream set is not that much of a resin efficient domain, so if you don't have good artifacts from that set already, then it might not be worth actually going there and farming this if you could alternatively go for the Golden Troop domain, which in comparison is very resin efficient because it also features the Marechaussee Hunter set. However, in turn, since the Golden Troop is so good on many sub-DPS characters, if you already have sets of the Husk of Opulent Dreams, then you probably rather want to go with this one, because the Husk set, in contrast to the Golden Troop, only goes on a select few Geo characters, so there's not much use to it otherwise. Also, if you want to keep it budget-friendly, then 2-piece 2-piece of Husk and Golden Troop should be a pretty solid option as well. Keep that one in mind when picking the artifact set of your choice. Now, before we go on to her possible team options, I want to take a quick moment to theorycraft her potential constellations, because I think there might be an alarming trend here. Now, obviously, in the stream they didn't show us anything about constellations and there also are no leaks out there regarding that yet. So please take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt, because I might be completely wrong. Remember how her skill scales with both her attack and her defense? 
Of course, we don't have any details on how exactly the numbers will be just yet, but Albedo suffers from the same problem of dual scaling, meaning that he scales with defense and with attack as well. And that is a problem because it means you will have to divert your attention on both defense and attack stats. And here's the thing that worries me. For Albedo, we have a constellation, namely his C2, which fixes that problem, making it very clear that with that constellation, you get a lot more damage, and from then on, you will have to focus on defense, because that is the important stat then. So basically, they implemented a problem into Albedo, the split scaling, and then sold us a constellation to solve that house-made problem. So when I see that Chiori potentially also scales with attack and defense, then that rings alarm bells for me because I think maybe they will also give us a constellation, you know, sell us a C1, C2, whatever, that will solve the problem that wouldn't have to be there in the first place. Let's hope that will not be the case and the scaling will be pretty straightforward, like for example with Nahida. Yes, she scales with attack and elemental mastery, but EM is the clear favorite. But it's just a little thought that I didn't want to leave out. Feel free to leave me your opinions on this in the comments down below. Also, if you don't want to miss any future Genshin guides, pre-release analysis or tutorials, then you might want to think about maybe leaving the channel a sub. Welcome to the crew. But now, let's look on to Chiori's team options. Now, when it comes to teams, Chiori will be pretty simple and very straightforward. Since her elemental skill, which is arguably the main source of her damage, will spawn two of these puppets, therefore dealing double the damage whenever there's a Geo construct on the field, it is very clear that she wants to be run at least with one more Geo character in the team. And that then narrows down the general team options a lot, because what it basically boils down to is, Chiori will be a sub DPS in a mono Geo team. Meaning you run Ito as your main on-field character, which is quite the coincidence because he happens to be on the same banner with her, Boru as a must-have character and a general buffer in Mono Geo teams, who will probably most likely be as a 4-star on the same banner, and then in the 4th slot you can use whatever you like, but probably you will use Zhongli for the shielding and the general resistance shred. I see this combination to be the most favorable Chiori team. However, there is a second option. If you want to spread out the damage a bit more and not only rely on her off-field damage and Ito's on-field damage, you could go a bit riskier, leave out Zhongli and add Albedo instead of him. That then means that with Albedo, with Chiori and with Ito, we have three damage dealers in the party being all buffed by Goru. Sure, you lose the protection from Zhongli's shield, but the overall team damage numbers should be higher with two sub-DPS in your group. But really, apart from these two team variations, I personally do not see many use cases for Shiori just yet, with one exception. Remember how they briefly mentioned that her burst can give her Geo Infusion? This would obviously be completely useless for a purely off-field character, so maybe that's a little indicator that she can actually deal respectable on-field damage. Should that be the case, and should she be a viable on-field damage dealer, then you could maybe go and replace Ito as the main carry of the team with her so she does the off-field and the on-field damage, then you could fit Albedo as a second off-field option, Goro as the buffer, and still have Zhongli for the shielding and the resistance shred. Of course, we'll have to wait for the actual damage numbers of her being the on-field character and see if she's really able to out-damage Ito, but it's a nice little theory and you should look into that once she actually comes out. Now, based on the previous leaks, a lot of people were pretty critical about Chiori, saying that she's basically just a reskin of Albedo, filling the exact same role, meaning either she will make him obsolete or there is no reason to pull for her in the first place, so obviously Chiori sucks right? Well, let's talk about that right now. Obviously, before we get a final verdict on her, we have to wait for her release and see which numbers she can actually deal. But from what they showed us in the reveal stream, I am still not too confident that she will be a very unique character compared to Albedo, because arguably she does serve the same role. She is a Geo off-field DPS, she does scale with defense, even the devs said that her signature weapon would work perfectly fine with Albedo, so there's a lot of similarity there. And from what I've seen, if you personally already have a mono Geo team with, you know, your typical Ito, Goru, Albedo and Zhongli, then there might actually be not that much of a need to go for Chiori. Should it turn out that her on-field performance is comparable to Ito while at the same time having her two puppets as off-field damage sources, 
Then, however, things might look drastically different because this would mean that Mono Geo gets a drastical buff, allowing you to have an on-field character who is a second off-field damage dealer at the same time, therefore massively increasing the overall team damage output. Would be kind of sad for Ito though. So yeah, does Chiori really suck now? Well, at the end of the day, Obviously, she does not suck, however, we need to be patient and wait for her actual release and then see for ourselves what the numbers look like, what the exact details of all of her kit will turn out to be, maybe also what her signature weapon will turn out to be and how relevant that will be, and then we can make the decision for ourselves whether she is a valuable addition for a Mono Geo team or if she's just really a reskin of Albedo and if you have Albedo already, you can safely skip her. That remains yet to be seen. However, what is very clear is that outside of Mono Geo, I don't think that Chiori will have much of a use in the game, so if you're not too fond of Mono Geo, then I think you can safely ignore her. As you see, quite the interesting character. And if you now want a list of the best 4-star characters that every account should have, then don't miss this video right here. We see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, Travel smart.